Welcome to SciTech Culture with Steve Kern and Ben Warner, where we examine science, technology, and culture in the 21st century. Visit our website at scitechculture.com. So what's the difference between a manager and a leader? The eternal question that um, everyone knows. Everyone thinks, um, you know, if they step into a manager role, they've it automatically grants them um, a position and maybe, I don't know, maybe a certain level of entitlements or um, that they're automatically able to do that position. Um, it's an interesting field. Before we get into the specifics of all of that, Steve, um, uh, uh, it's almost like... Um, like you would hope that you know whether it's um, uh, government agencies or private companies, big corporations, or even just um, any um, environment where someone has to lead a group of people to conduct an activity or execute an outcome. Uh, that I don't know how. Uh, like there'll probably be instances where that's uh, focused on and taught, or um, uh, you know, sort of um, to train people how to, because these are skills that can be picked up. Obviously, there's some people it comes naturally, but if you point out to people through training that to focus on these types of areas that they could pick these things up as well, some people obviously just aren't suited to it. But um, overall, you would hope that, I, I, I don't know if there's enough of that in organizations generally um, that it really should be, something that's sort of front and center if um, any sort of organization wants to run well because um, it's something that you th- oh yeah I can just do it or I'll just yeah you know, we'll just put these managers in or whatever and not not think about are they good managers are they good quality managers and because it's sort of sitting in a HRE people space where um, it's hard to quantify um, into what the results will be, but maybe there isn't. An, there can at times not be enough focus on it. I think. Oh look, I I agree. It's I, I find you know, let's face it. There's a field management theory about how you manage, you know, which includes leadership. Uh, but then you know, at a I guess a a more real world scenario away from the theory, you've actually just got KPIs on management, which usually sort of uh, look at uh, areas that are important to the business and and sometimes, you know, I guess some areas, you know, important to the the staff or or the the people and culture of an organisation. But, you know, uh, people were people and humans are human and uh, we're all fallible. So just because you've done some management training, management course or even an MBA doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a particularly good manager. However, the more training you have in management, the more practiced you should be and the better you should perform, I guess, above no training at all. But that doesn't, that, that doesn't guarantee, that doesn't guarantee success. That's for sure. Well, that's because there's a human element to it. Um, because like, if you look at like, say some of the basic definitions between being a leader versus being a manager, before I get into that, just one side note is that I think the best of all worlds here is where you've got both of those together um in in the manager but for instance the leaders sort of like providing the um the vision and inspiring people and um leading them out there so that they'll follow so in other words i think there's a component of leadership where the leader is in, is encouraging people to follow them to want to do whatever it is that they're leading them on whereas the manager um just comes in and really just has to execute whatever the predetermined um vision is now you can see why if um, you've got a good leader who is also a good manager that's sort of like the unicorn model there if you if you get someone like that um, because you've simultaneously got someone that can um, set the vision but also knows how to execute it and I think that's kind of a rare thing I mean it does happen but it's um, it, it's hard to kind of get those two qualities in the same person but because quite often you might get a good leader but then they if they don't know or don't have a skill set to execute it's the same old thing like it's great you can cut you know you can spend 10 minutes to come up with a great idea but the reality of most situations is that it takes 10 minutes to come up with the idea and then it takes 12 months to actually do the hard grinding work to make it happen which is not fun um because well i mean it can be fun it's just that that's where all the obstacles are to overcome to be able to execute that 
sort of big picture vision. So, and then on the flip side, if you've only got managers and no no leaders setting the vision, then um, you've got you're going nowhere um, because you're executing on something that isn't defined. T- totally, totally agree with you. I, it's interesting, you know. Some managers do use the word fun. I come from maybe an era where I don't go to work to have fun. That fun is what you do on Saturday nights. I go to work to work, get satisfaction from it perhaps, maybe some days. But that is highly dependent on the management and the leadership and the organisation you work at. So they're very very interesting. Uh, I think, you know, when, when we sit back, all of us, you know, work in an environment where we're being managed, all of us except, I guess, the CEO, and even then he's managed by the board or she is managed by the board. So... It's uh, it's just very interesting, you know, to understand these structures and and how they could be optimized. I mean, for instance, with uh, AI performing the way that it does, is that all the management that we'll need in future? I wonder what what does the human element give? Human element is definitely there in leadership, management. I don't know. Perhaps that could be tested. I think there's an argument. Um it's a bit oh, how how can you put it i think there's um uh, sort of a sometimes hard to like really draw a, a line between these two concepts as well because one can one does bleed into the other and vice versa um and it could also be virtue of necessity that it does that because of whatever you know, pressures are happening on um on any given organization at any time they might have to um you know um, engage in these qualities in different ways, and um, you know, like the when you know, when you talk about like the fun aspect, it, I would say that's more um, about inspiration. Um, so you know, you're in, you're getting inspired to do a task um, because um, you can see the potential of what it could be. Um, and what you could bring to the table, at least that's what you would think if you're the person working on it under a manager. Whereas a manager, a strict manager, may not necessarily give you um, a focus on why that's actually happening or why you need to do it. That's not to say that you can't sit there and just you know clock out your your eight hours and um, get your get well paid for it, and you could be perfectly satisfied that that's what you came in for. That sounds like fun. <laughs> But um, but if you're say working at a company that um, or an organisation that is actually on a mission to do something quite interesting, quite um, good for the world, whatever, and you and you've got a leader that has that sort of crystal clear vision of how to do that, and then you've got a management team that can execute that. That could potentially be quite exciting as an employee, and that and you factor in all those types of things, um, and. It can make the difference to um, how everything turns out in the end, and it's kind of the it sort of underlines the importance of why good leadership is important um, and good and good management. Because, like I said, I don't think these things can operate in silos or one without the other. Because it's you need the idea and you need to f- know how to execute it. And there's so many times where I think. I actually, given the amount of work that has to go into the management slash execution of an idea, <clears throat> um, it's tempting to think that um, the leadership part isn't as important. But you do, still do need that um, sort of uh, big picture uh, person to um, to to frame everything for what you're doing. So when you're going in there and slaving for your eight hours a day because um, things aren't working, but you know, you just have to work. You just have to push it a little bit more and a little bit more, week after week, month after month. But you've got that picture in your head as to where that's going to end up. Yeah, well, it's definitely uh, a part of it, and it's maintaining that vision, as you say. But yeah, I, you know, I wonder. You know, uh, you look at, I guess, some of the more prominent people in business, like Elon Musk. You know, is he a leader or just actually a very clever manager? Or, or does he actually achieve both in uh, the way he speaks and the way he talks? And remember, I mean, his ventures are, are very futuristic and they are all huge gambles and yet he's been remarkably successful in everything from SpaceX through to uh, Tesla. So, 
you know, I, I often wonder when I, I listen to people like him talk and and I end up just scratching my head about him. <laughs> but he but he does he does really polarize people and the people on board with him certainly do work very effectively. But of course he probably attracts the best people to his organizations. Uh, the to me the um uh, an obvious example too would be say Apple of the two thousands where um you've got Steve Jobs being the Mister Visionary, um and um someone like Tim Cook is um executing um everything oper well ev operationally but I know it's a bit more nuanced than that because there's more people involved um in the leadership and they're all. Um, doing their bit but um, there was that time at Apple where you know you had your visionary founder guy you know setting the tone and um, regardless of how nice he was when he was doing it um, but uh, and then you've got um, a lot of operational guys that literally made it happen now I, I like today I would say Apple's sort of transitioned into it's become a team um, of people yeah. that do both of those things but the same philosophy is still there and you could argue that there's a lot of companies like that, that probably other tech companies fit into that space it's probably something similar to an extent of like a place like microsoft or google etc about pushing those things forward but then it, uh, you know there's no reason why that sort of setup can't exist anywhere else really and even if um you know what you're doing isn't um, uh, is just to maintain a service uh, for somebody or for the public or something like that. That can be good enough. Um, you know, to you, you still need that um, dynamic of um, all right, we're doing this for this reason and it's noble or whatever, um, and uh, or, or it's you know business wise highly profitable. So that that helps, um, and uh, that's the reason why we have that's the reason why we keep going and that's what makes them successful. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, you know, I think it's about everyone buying in, as you say, to that that sort of uh, a leadership vision. Whatever cause the organisation is seeking to enact, uh, yes, you definitely need that, that visionary somewhere in the organisation, but then you need to be able to mobilise everyone from management in every role beneath that to uh, to to make that vision real. Mm, absolutely i guess i just want to finish on one final point is that none of this is easy we're making it sound like yeah you just do this and you just do that just do that it's um it's not easy um there's a, i definitely think there's a component of um some people um uh do naturally just have it some people um have it to a degree and learn learn it others people do learn it because they're highly observational and are able to take these things in and adjust their approach and of course, some people don't have it, but they still end up in these positions, um, and that's where you end up with uh, with a bit of strife if you happen to be working in a place like that. Replace them with AI. That's what I say. Uh, we're not far away from it. We're not far away from it. <laughs> All right, Steve, we might wrap it up there. So um, don't forget to check out our website, SciTechCulture.com. You can get all of our links and content there. We've got our um, uh, YouTube and Vimeo feeds, RSS feeds, so you can you can subscribe to us there, and we hope you enjoy the content. All right, so that's it for this episode. We'll catch you next time.